Hello, everybody. It is Monday at 8 o'clock, and we are here for the Speak Up and Inspire series live with me, Tiffany. And tonight, we are going to be talking to Miss Patrice Bush, who is the founder of It Takes Two Marriage Counseling. Miss Patrice does um, retreats, counseling, group therapy, individual therapy um, with couples that are um, married and want to have successful, happy marriages. So tonight we are going to be talking to Miss Patrice. Um, it is ugh, stress, <laughs> stress awareness month. So I wanted to talk to Miss Patrice about marriage and stress because she is a marriage coach. And as a married woman myself, I know that marriages can be pretty stressful at times. Um, I've been married before. Um, my husband has not been married before. So it's all about learning each other. Number one, communicating, um, working together, um, having and knowing who each other is, learning each other, um, accepting each other's differences, um, compromising, all of that great stuff. But marriage is still stressful. It's not all happy dory, happy dory, all the time. It's not always blissful. It's not always um, romantic. Marriage can be stressful, but it can also be beautiful at the same time. So for Stress Awareness Month, I thought it was really important for us not to just talk about the awareness causes that I talk about a lot on the Speak Up and Inspire series, but also to talk about relationships. Um, relationships in general are work. You have to put in the work in order to maintain a healthy um, relationship. And I posted earlier when I was talking about um, our, excuse me, when I was talking about our um, podcast tonight is that we can't have a stress-free free marriage. That's not possible at all. But what we can do is that we can reduce the stress in our marriages by just doing some respectful things and treating each other the way we want to be treated. And that starts with knowing who the head of the household is, which starts with God and Christ. Um, having God in your life is um, one of the many, um, one of the many things that I've heard other couples say, but even if you are not a believer in Christ, having accountability for yourself and each other is something that's really important in relationships. That's just my take on it, but I would love to talk to Miss Patrice, and we are going to do that right now, where we are going to talk to her about what it is that she does, um, about her marriage coaching, what that means, and also what are some tips that she can give us on living a less stressful um, marriage life and how we can contribute and help each other. We always hear this saying, and my father was very big on this, happy wife, happy life, or happy wife, happy home, however you want to say it. But having a happy marriage is about both the husband and the wife, or both the fiancés, um, or girlfriend and boyfriend, or the partners in a relationship, period. Both of them being happy contributes to the bliss and the stress-free of being married or being in a long-term committed relationship. So we're going to be talking to Miss Patrice Bush tonight and about marriage and how we can have a successful, healthy, stress-less, not stress-free marriage. So I hope that all of you are going to be listening. In. If you have any questions, please feel free. Last week, I introduced my book to a lot of you because it's also Sexual Awareness Month. Um, in my book, I talk about sexual awareness and um, surviving sexual assault myself personally. And the book describes my experiences as a structural, sexual 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 assault survivor through the characters in my book. But it also talks about relationships and how to 
rebuild relationships when you've had trauma in your life. And not just trauma, but also finding yourself. And sometimes people might outgrow their relationships. Sometimes we don't find ourselves until we're in a relationship or just having relationships with people that you can trust, that care for you, that are generally interested in your well-being and you improving yourself and your life. And in my book, I or the character in the book, Tony, she is not only dealing with a traumatic situation, but also making changes in her life because of the trauma that she went to. She has very big support systems in her parents and her best friends, um, but she's also an advocate in her community. And so in my book, Reality Check, it's not just a survivor story. It is also a story of relationships and finding yourself and being happy and compromise and communication and being vulnerable, but not neglecting yourself. If that sounds familiar, then it might also sound like marriage, being happy, growing together, communicating, compromise, and sometimes finding out who you are in the relationship can either make it or it can break it. So we're going to talk to Miss Patrice. She is ready to talk to us. Um, I've been excited to talk to her all day because I'm married myself. And being that this is my husband's first marriage, um, it has been a, a rocky road. I won't deny that. It's been a rocky road because he's younger than me. He has never been married before. And I have been married for before. So I came into the relationship with some past baggage, but I also came into the relationship knowing what I wanted when it came to marriage. And he did too, but we had to learn what marriage was for our relationship and not for everyone else. Our marriage is for us. And so we strive to make each other happy every day. Um, we talk, we've realized that communication is something that we need to work on and is very important in our lives. Um, we take time to go out for date nights. Um, we take time to talk every evening before we go to bed about our days. But when there is stress in our marriage due to you know, health issues or finances or just a part of everyday life, Sometimes we both know that we have to take time to relax and reconnect and, and just invest in our marriage. A lot of marriages end prematurely because people are not willing to fight for their marriage and they're not willing to put in the work that marriage takes. Marriage takes work. It is a 24-7 job. And I have been able to witness the many um, events and the many resources and the many activities that Miss Patrice puts on or host for different couples for them to be able to connect with each other in various ways. So we are going to go ahead and add her now. And for some reason, my phone, oh, there we go. There she is. Hello, Will. Hello, Allie. Hi, Megan. Hello, Fred. How are you doing? Being kind to each other is definitely, definitely important. Oh, there we go. I learned very early that treat each other the way you want to be treated is one of the biggest ways for us to make our, our partners happy. Hello, Miss Patrice. How are you? Good evening. I am well. How are you? I am doing really, really good. Thank you. <laughs> so I started Is off. Is feedback on your end? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Yep. When Technical you... difficulties over here. It, I couldn't see your invitation on my 
computer so i'm on the phone and it sounds weird this way oh okay okay no i'm not hearing any feedback um for those that are watching if you are hearing any um feedback or if it's difficult for you to hear please Unfortunately, if we are if we disconnect, it's going to be hard for me to bring her back on. Um, but hopefully, we will figure it out. Okay. So, Miss Patrice. Uh oh, it looks like we lost her. So we will wait for her to reconnect. Hopefully. Let me see. Okay, so what I want you to do while we're waiting for her to reconnect is I would like for everyone that is watching right now to tell me if you are currently married. And if you are currently married, how long have you been married? I know myself, um, I've been married for going on two years. Um, March 8th was our year two mark. Um, again, I've heard that the first three years of marriage are pretty uh, difficult. They weren't kidding <laughs> at all. I have several people that are listening right now. Um, one is my very, very close friend, Melissa. I've known her since middle school. And she called me and told me that she is going to be able, I mean, sorry, that she is going to be getting married next year. So she's been married before. And so I know that she's not going into this blindly, but sometimes we don't realize how hard and how much work marriage is until we're actually in it. So it looks like Patrice is having a hard time getting on. So we might have to reconnect because we're having some difficulties here. So give me one second to see if we can try to get her on here. Hmm. All right, guys, it looks like we are going to have to try this over because for some reason she got kicked off and I have no idea why. All right, so please hold on. We're going to have to restart this whole thing because for some reason she's not able to connect. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hello, Ms. Janet. So I see that you have been... Okay, can married. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Are we okay now? <laughs> okay, I can hear you too. Okay, great, great. So I was asking some people if they can let us know. We have a lot of people watching right now. And so I asked them how long or are they married at all? And we've had a couple of people say that they are engaged right now. Um, we also have Miss Janet who said that she's been married for five years. Um, I have been married for two years. Uh, Miss Marcia, she said that she was married for 17 years and now she is divorced and she said that she is not ever getting married again <laughs> so um tell us what is it about marriage that you liked the most and you didn't like that's something that i would like to know what is something that you liked the most and what did you not like about marriage And for some reason, we keep losing Patrice. So I have my husband here with me. You guys doing? Good evening. <laughs> and for some reason, we are having technical difficulties trying to get Miss Patrice on. 
Marcia, tell us, why is it that you would not get married again? Would love to hear that. So when we look up resources while we're trying to get Miss Patrice back on, let's look up the percentage of couples The percentage of couples that get married, I mean, sorry, they get divorced every year. And I'm sure that we'll find that the percentage of couples that get divorced every year is pretty high. Why do you think that so many couples are divorcing? What do you think are the top reasons that people break up and they end their marriage? Forty to fifty percent of married couples in the United States divorce. That's a whole lot. Forty to fifty percent of married couples in the United States divorce. So why do you think it is that all of these couples are divorcing? Why do you think that is? So Miss Miss, Miss Patrice, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. Um, it's like I'll be on for about two minutes and then literally it just, the screen goes black and it says Tiffany's video will post later. Oh no. Okay. Well, then we're just going to jump right into it. Patrice, tell us what it is that you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thanks for having me on the show. I am Patrice Bush. I am the owner and marriage coach of It Takes Two Marriage Coaching where we provide what I like to call holistic relationship services right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We do everything from premarital counseling to marital counseling to destination marriage retreats. We do uh, monthly couples date nights. We have two support groups, the First Wives Club, which is a support group for the ladies, and then the Gentlemen's Club, which is a support group for the fellas. We do uh, um Hire the coach packages, which, which allows couples to hire us for private events as well as guest speaking events um, as and workshops. So we do a little bit of everything as it relates to relationships. Okay. So when couples come to you, is it because that they're unhappy? Sometimes. Okay. Um, you know, I say we see couples on both ends of the spectrum. We have couples that... Um, come to us because things are going really well and they're looking for it to stay well. So they're just looking for additional strategies and tools when it comes to the counseling part of what we do. Um, and then like our destination marriage retreats or our couples date nights, most of those couples are just looking to keep their marriage spicy and exciting and looking for something new and something out of the box to do. Um, but then to the contrary, we have couples that will literally come and the first time I see them, they sit on my couch and they say, listen, if you can't save this marriage tomorrow, we will be in a divorce attorney's office. So we have wow. couples on both ends of the spectrum. Wow. Why did you go into marriage counseling? Um, well, I am a, a therapist by trade. Um, so I've been in, I've been a therapist for, I think this is my 14th year. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I chose to focus on families for many, many years. Um, so oftentimes I'd be in my practice, I'd have moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandparents, kids, everybody in the room. And after doing that for so many years, I realized that if I wanted to have the biggest impact on families, I needed to start with the root, which was husband and wife, mom and dad. And so um, after, being, after being a family therapist for... I guess that was maybe nine to 10 years. Um, I decided to branch out and start my own private practice in 2013, which is It Takes Two Marriage Coaching. And I have been focusing on couples since then. So it's been six years. This is our sixth year of just working with couples. And again, just understanding that that means we have a greater impact on that family by working solely with the couple. With the couples. Okay, so I asked while we were trying to figure out what was going on with the technical stuff. I asked um, the question, why do people think that a lot of marriages are failing? So from your perspective, why are a lot of marriages failing now? That's a layered question because I don't think 
there's not one individual answer for that. I can give you a couple different things that I see in my office. I see the biggest challenge that I see with couples is communication. Mm -hmm. um, couples lack the ability to communicate with each other in a proper and healthy way. Mm -hmm. And just like anything else, <laughs> hey there, just like anything else, um, you know, comparing it, let's just say to like a physical ailment, Mm -hmm. um, if I sprang my ankle in 2010, um, and I continue to walk on that sprained ankle into, you know, 2019, nine years later, that ankle is eventually going to, it, that, that, uh, sprain is eventually going to become worse and worse to the point to where I won't be able to walk on it and it will become excruciating to even deal with. And so when I relate that back to communication, oftentimes it starts off with the little stuff that we can't communicate about. And because for the sake of keeping the peace, I don't want to argue, I'm going to sweep the side of the rug, I'm picking and choosing my battles, whatever the reason we say we're not going to do with the little stuff, we carry on that little stuff for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And by the time couples get to that point, that ankle is tore up and it's excruciating to continue to deal with. And so people are like, you know what, I'd rather be single than deal with this level of frustration or pain or anxiety or whatever it is that they have going on. So I'd say communication is, I believe, uh, is the biggest reasons that couples divorce. But there's many of them, but that would be the biggest one. Yes. Um, and I, from the research that I've done um, and being married before, um, I'm not a professional marriage counselor, but just from my experience and just talking to other couples, you know, friends, grandparents, my parents, um, communication is definitely um, a big factor because it relates to everything. When you're talking about finances, when you're talking about your intimacy, um, you know, making time for each other, it all boils down to the communication piece. So I would, I can understand how that could be a big factor in why um, couples don't make it. If they don't have a good foundation for their communication, then that trickles down and affects everything else. Mm -hmm. I have, I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I add... Um, now this is this is my first marriage, um, so and for me, my first and only marriage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I didn't have a night a, a good role model. You know what I'm saying? To base off what marriage is supposed to be, so that's that's number one. But a lot of uh, what I've been seeing, I've been speaking to a lot of you know older people that's been married you know 20, 30 years, and a lot of them say you know number one. Um, that people do what they need to do to get them. And then when they got them, they don't do that same stuff to keep them. And then they said the other Very thing true. was <laughs> people are so quick to walk away from something instead of doing the work to make it right. So, um, you know, that's the, some of the, you know, here recently or whatever, some of the, the advice and stuff that I got. And, I, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, you got to yeah. be willing to put the work here. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the thing about the work um, is that, you know, we, we didn't name It Takes Two Marriage Coaching that name because we like the song. As a matter of fact, I'm not like a huge song, a huge fan of that. It takes two, baby. Don't really like it. Not my genre, not my song. So, like, this is not a cliche for us. I mean, you know, it is so important for us to understand when it comes to that fight that you're talking about, that couples just throw in the towel because they lack the fight. Oftentimes what I see is that they're not fighting at the same time. So there's a matter of one person has decided to fight, you know, in 2005, 2006, that person and gave up. Now the other other spouse is ready to fight. And they're they're sort of living this lifestyle of um, I'm gonna fight when it's convenient for me. And the problem when fighting when it's convenient for you is that it takes two people to keep a relationship working. If only one person is fighting and one person, and when I say fighting, I mean fighting, I'm not talking about the yelling, the screaming, the cussing each other out, the throwing lamps around the room. I mean fighting for your marriage, making a decision that no matter what comes, what goes, hell, how water, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk through this because you and I are going to be together forever. That's the kind of fight that I'm talking about. 
and couples lack that um, and especially lack it at the same time. And if you don't have a fight going on both ends of the spectrum, you might as well go ahead and, and bring your pillow and your blanket because you're going to be worn out trying to save a marriage by yourself. It does take two people. And I do think that that's how people end, in th end up throwing in that towel because they feel like they're alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear a couple say it all the time. I've been doing this and this and this all by myself and my spouse won't do this and my spouse won't do that. Or, you know, my spouse won't go to counseling. My spouse this, And so it's a one-sided relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then that's the communication piece comes in or whatever. At what point did you try to tell that person, hey, you know, I feel like you're not doing this, you're not doing that, whatever. The conversations that people don't want to have or people don't feel comfortable with, you know, that's the conversations that that need to be had, you know, yep. like, you know, if, if like, even with, with me and Tiffany, like, you know, we have a good time, you know, we, we vibe, you know, we can make a good time out of any time, but then we got the conversations that we have to have the, the things that are a little tougher, like, you know, when it comes down to the kids, when it comes down to the, I'm, I'm pro, oh, uh, when it comes <laughs> down to the finances, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how, how we doing this? Or, you know, we just had a conversation, um, I think it was yesterday about life insurance and will and what happens when I die. And, and, I'm, I'm, it's new to me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm 33 years old and, and is I haven't really been prepared to, to talk about that, but it's like, now I got to think about that. Like, well, I could pass away tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And is, is Tiffany going to be taken care of? Are the kids going to be taken care of? Like, that's the conversations that you have to have. Yeah. And Absolutely. I, you know, it's, it's good to talk about when everything is going really good and you are talking about the good things. But then when you have those moments in your relationship where things are not going so good, then as you said earlier, you don't wanna make waves, you wanna just keep the peace, so forth and so on. But then you're not having the conversations and then the problem continues to get worse and now you have the breakdown and mm -hmm. the marriage is starting to suffer. Mm -hmm. So I know that you um, do workshops. What kind of workshops do you do for couples? Um, so actually one that we are uh, work. Well, let me say this really quickly, if you don't mind. So our next uh, workshop says date night event is coming up on April the 20th. And that is a massage date night where we have hired a professional masseuse to come in and teach our couples how to give each other professional massages. Not my area. So we're bringing in trained people that can teach us those things. But what I want to throw in about that, that's super important outside of learning how to massage your mate that's also going to include a workshop around what we call the IRS. And what we refer to the IRS in uh, Edit Takes Two means intimacy plus romance equals great sex. So Ooh. we're going to be talking about how do we... <laughs> We're going to be talking about how do we um, employ that physical touch that we're going to learn from this professional pursuit um, mm -hmm. into ways of learning how to fight because physical touch is a part of learning how to fight. Mm -hmm. um, and there's very important strategies that we can use in simply touching our spouse that can help calm them down, that can help soothe us when we're frustrated, when anxiety is high, when we can't have a certain conversation because we already know I didn't know how you feel about this. I don't really want to address it. Um, so we're going to infuse uh, the massage into a full conversation. And like I said, workshop around intimacy, romance, and how that equals to great sex. Um, so workshops like that, we do communication workshops, which are super important. We do workshops on the love languages of you all. For, I think pretty mm -hmm. sure you all are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually working on a workshop right now that I'm super excited about that'll be coming out this summer. Um, and, it, and it's around what happens when your hero fails you. And mm -hmm. talking about our spouses dealing with previous pains that they had before they ever met us. Right. And somebody in their life failed them in dealing with that pain or healing from whatever they were going through. And now that pain has rooted itself and is manifesting within your marriage. So now you having a fight or battle that didn't have nothing to do with you because it was five or six years before you came along. But because that individual or that spouse never dealt with it, mm -hmm. it keeps coming up and being repeated as a cycle within your relationship. Wow, um, that's really important. And I, I mentioned that when we were um, 
connecting you in is that um, with my past experience of trauma, I have, it's something that I've had to talk to him about, about, you know, me having PTSD and how certain ways you talk to me might be triggers. Um, and just, you know, it affects uh, my intimacy sometimes. Um, but then also with him, what, you know, what he just shared is that he didn't really have a example of marriage in his home and so there was a lot of he came into our marriage not really knowing what a successful marriage was um and so that would make sense that we need to those things that are in our past of course are going to come into our relationships but how does your spouse support you while you're dealing and healing from those past things when yeah. before you bring them into the marriage and destroy the marriage that, yeah. that's good so let me add um especially for me uh, to kind of go back to what I said, I didn't have that. This is what a good husband is. So I'm just kind of floating. Like, I know I love her and I want to be here. So I think I'm supposed to do this and this and this, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't have that, that, that role model to go off of. And then it, it, it dug deeper. You know what I'm saying? Once, you know, I started therapy for the first time, and mm -hmm. it turns out that my lack of relationship with my dad is where the root of the problem is. And so it's like, because mm -hmm. I'm like that, uh -oh. um, because, I, because I don't have that, and because, you know, my dad wasn't the best good husband role model when it came down to my parents, it's like, that's, that's all I. So now it's like, you know, and, and Tiffany helped me with this. It was like I kind of ran from the problem. It was just like I don't have nothing to say to him. We don't really have a good relationship. And she was like, no, she's like, you need to talk to him. You need to forgive him because it's not for him. It's for you so that you can be a better man. And I, and shocking to say, since I forgave him, since I've, not that we speak every day, but since I've kind of brought that relationship back, it's helped me to be better towards you. Yeah, yeah. I love that uh, you can own what you, you know, what your past hurts are and that you were, that you've sought out therapy. That's a dope thing. I think the biggest thing we can do for our spouse when we're dealing with the spouse that has past hurts, and everybody does, let's just be honest. I really don't know anybody that is void of, past hurt, past issues, um, you know, past failed relationships in whatever capacity. They could be relationships with that parent, relationship with an ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, ex-spouse, whatever. We all have them. And I think the best, the, the first way we begin to support each other is, is having that open, honest conversation, that vulnerability that allows you to say, hey, listen, let me just start off by letting you know this is what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. here is where my challenges are, here is why they exist. And then from that moment of transparency, then you can begin to work with each other and assist each other in getting through the hurt and the, um, the, the challenges that, we've that we're dealing with from childhood or even just early adulthood. We have some um, people that I'm, I'm looking to see who is watching. And I know that I have a couple of friends on here that are engaged. What do you suggest to people that are engaged before they get married? What kind of things should they be doing before they get married to help build a, a good foundation for their marriage? So the number one thing I got to say, and I know y'all going to look at me like you just saying that because you're a marriage counselor. <laughs> but I, I have yet to see any other evidence or any other research that has, that has supported that this would not be true. The number one best thing you can do for your relationship prior to marriage is to get premarital counseling. I cannot think of a single strategy that is more effective than that. 
having a third party, having somebody to mediate a professional. I'm not talking about your mom and your daddy and your sister and your brother I and you <laughs> because oh I've been married before so I could tell you about it. No, your marriage ain't this marriage. This is two different relationships. You need somebody that's a professional with real strategy and real tools and can actually sit down and give you some real life tangible tools that you can apply once you're married. So that's my number, number one thing I'd say, get marital counseling. Um, number two, I would say go ahead and start working on those communication skills. Master what it looks like and feels like to talk to your mate even when you're mad, even when you're frustrated, even when you're angry, even when you don't understand. Learn what it looks like to be friends. Um, it's super important that you like each other. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we confuse love with like because we think well you know I love them so of course that means I like them Patrice but if you really think about that on a deeper level we can love people that we don't like that is so true that is so true <laughs> I don't like him sometimes no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but that is so true so you definitely recommend premarital marital counseling um working on those communication skills and then really getting to like each other by being friends getting yep. to know each other on a, okay. on a deeper level as friends yep Yes, just like the same way we do with our girlfriends or your guy friends. Y'all go have dinner, lunch together, have drinks, chat it up on the phone for hours upon hours upon hours. I mean, all of that is the, the process of getting to know each other. Right. And the more you know about the person, the more you can decide this is somebody that I really like. Mm -hmm. And or you can say this is somebody that I don't like. So let me just say this real quick, because this is not a popular statement, mm -hmm. but I am speaking to just what I know to be true doing this work for as many years as I've done it. Mm -hmm. Engagement is not for the preparation of weddings. Mm hmm. If you have asked somebody to marry you, that engagement period is actually your preparation period to see if this is somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with. So often we get engaged and we think it's the end of the wedding. So because we have that perception, we get to, as we're, while we're engaged in that year or two time, we learn new things about that person that we don't like. Right. We develop non-negotiables that that person is now crossing. Mm -hmm. and we're like okay but I've already planned this wedding we've already put money into it we've already told people we're married we did our Facebook post we showed our rings <laughs> yeah no that's so not the purpose of the premarital portion it is really for you to get to know that person on a deeper level and determine if this is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with right so it's the trial period before you sign the contract <laughs> that's it and if yeah. that trial is messed up, I suggest you don't do it, at least not in that time. Right, right. And sometimes we get afraid of that too. Like, oh, well, all my friends are getting married and everybody else is doing this and da, da 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 And so we rush ourselves into things that we're not ready for. And that's a real reality too. Right. Um, that's interesting that you say that. Okay, so both of us are um, are wedding officiants, and I always get que get the question, do do you require premarital counseling? And my answer is always, and like it was today, someone asked me today. I said, is it a must? No. Do I recommend it? Yes, um, because it, getting to know your spouse beforehand is so important and I'm just gonna go back to Cedric and I our romance was very quick <laughs> so we met in August we were married in March and so a lot of people say y'all didn't know each other first and that's why y'all go through what y'all go through and honestly that's probably true there are things that we didn't know about each other but the difference is is that now we're married. We realize that we're married. We realize that we made this commitment. We know that we love each other. We're still learning each other. We're still learning ourselves, honestly. Um, and so that's one thing that we did not do. Now, what we did do is we sought um, uh, religious counseling, but we did not do the professional counseling. And so can you I know you said you don't go to your mom, you don't go to your friends, so forth and so on. But a lot of people will go to their their pastors. But pa do pastors 
I guess in my opinion, I think it's better to go to professional counselors because the pastors are only going to give you their spiritual input, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, trial-based and (laughs) proven and so forth and so on. So how do you feel about that when someone says, you know, I'm going to premarital counseling, I'm going to my pastor or I'm going to my church. How do you feel about that without getting in trouble? (laughs) Right. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a touchy subject. Yes, I know, but that's what we're here about. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know what? Like this could be a rabbit hole, and I got lots of thoughts on it. I will simply <laughs> say this. Um if you are comfortable with whomever it is, your spiritual advisor, the pastor at your church marriage minister, ministry, Um, if that's where you are most comfortable and if you didn't do that, you would not see a professional counselor, then Mm -hmm. by all means, at minimum, do that. Right. However, just like every professional counselor is not created equal, every Mm -hmm. pastor is not created equal. And so I've had poor spiritual advice from, um, I've had poor marriage advice from Mm -hmm pastors Mm -hmm. and I've also had really good sound marital advice from from pastors Mm -hmm. so you know I think at the end of the day a lot of it I won't say a lot of it is will be research based um if you go from a spiritual perspective but I don't think that it means that you won't necessarily get sound advice right okay that was a great great answer (laughs) so I gotta um something um and in promoting um, that we officiate weddings, I had a, a couple ask me um, about, is there a specific time frame to be engaged? And, you know, just to kind of come back to us and, and, and how our stuff went so quick. And I told them, I was like, every person is different. Every couple is different. Every relationship is different. Every marriage is different. The one thing that I've learned since we've been married is that there's not really a rule book. There's not, there's not really a rule book to how this is supposed to go. And and that's the best thing that I can really say or whatever. So um, what it so what are your thoughts on that the, that time frame? A lot of people is like, oh, I gotta be engaged for a year or two years and blah blah blah, whatever. So what, what's your take on that? I don't I don't have a time frame for anybody. Um I think to eat- Uh-oh. We we lost her. Hopefully we'll get her back in a second. Um feel or what does she feel that the time frame should be for being engaged? And so I would say that we would like to hear your answers. What do you feel is a good time frame for being engaged? What do you feel the time frame is? Do you feel that there is a limit or there should be a minimum that you should be engaged for? Why is this the reason you have to join your broadcast? No answers from, okay. So we're trying to get her back on so that we can finish talking to her. But what do you feel? Those that are watching, and we have uh, many that are watching tonight, what do you feel should be the time frame from dating to getting engaged to getting married or can you share yourselves what was your time frame for us we moved pretty quickly so <laughs> we went from august to getting engaged in november. november to getting married in march so but to to, <laughs> to stem off of that question and this is definitely relatable um the other kind of controversial topic. Do y'all have gender roles in y'all marriage, in y'all household? Um, oh, she back on. Oh, there she is. Hi. <laughs> Somebody don't want us to talk, back. y'all. Back. That's a good one. I want to come back. We were trying one. to keep it going. So we were talking about... Um, is are there the minimums that that are suggested for being engaged and you were about to answer that for us <laughs> yeah no i don't i don't think that there's a minimum i don't 
you know, I don't think it has anything to do with a time frame. Um, I will say this. Um, I've seen couples get married in six months and relationship fail. And I've seen couples get married in six months and be married for 30 years. Oh, Dang. Lordy. Again. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so while we trying to get her back, I want to come back to that. Um, gender roles. This is, is a super controversial topic. Um, I, I've talked about it with my therapist and, and in my support groups. So, you know, a lot of people feel like the woman is supposed to do this, this, and this, and the man <laughs> is supposed to do this, this, and this, and you know, and they feel like like it's a rule book, like that's how it has to be or it won't work. And I'm telling you, I, I don't agree. You know, what I'm saying I, it take two to tango. You know, I can wash clothes and wash dishes just as good as she can. You know what I mean? So I, it's it's it, it, I think it's whatever floats your boat. You know. So what do you think, Patrice? Are are there still gender roles in marriages these days? Or or has that changed? Like, is it a specific way? Like, the man has to do this, and the woman has to do this, and that's how you have a successful marriage? Or, yeah, you know, that's, that's my question. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. She I don't was know getting ready to talk. She, she was about to spill the tea. Okay, so roles are, still exist. When our grandparents grew up, the 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 wife was at home, or the the woman was at home. She was take, caring for the kids. She was caring caring for the home, and it worked back then. But now we've had the women's movement. We have more women that are working. How do you feel about that? Are gender roles helpful to marriages? Do they make marriages stronger? Um, do they cause issues in the marriage? Um, what do you think? And then also. Because the subject for tonight was happy couple, happy marriage. We have all heard the saying, happy wife, happy life. Maybe no. I should happy happy spouse, happy house. <laughs> I will fight that to death. <laughs> so, Patrice, I don't so be so we don't lose you anymore. We try to get some of these answers to the question. <laughs> um, we were talking about gender roles. Can you address that pretty quickly? Yes. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what's going on. We must be having some really juicy conversations. <laughs> somebody don't want somebody All of your stuff and you miss But uh, <laughs> no. So, and it takes two. We do not. We do not teach gender roles. I don't believe that. In any relationship, um, a man has to do a certain thing or a woman has to do a certain thing. Now, what's funny, though. Oh, she was about to give it to us. <laughs> She's gone. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to schedule to get Miss Patrice back on the show. Um, oh, well, we have about 10 minutes. We're going to make sure that we get Miss Patrice back on the show so that we can continue this conversation. Because we're having some really good dialogue about about marriage. So Patrice, you were talking about gender roles, how you don't um, you don't uh, co-sign gender roles in marriages. Um, so the subject of our podcast tonight was happy couples, happy marriage versus happy wife, happy life. <laughs> That's something that my dad used to say all the time. Um, if I was dating someone seriously. Oh, you know, man, happy wife, happy life. Just say yes. Mm -hmm. Whatever she says, say yes. So what do you think about that? When it comes to the household, happy wife, happy life. Oh, oh Lordy. Look, husband's <laughs> got to be happy, too. That's all I'm saying. When you, if the husband ain't happy, I don't know how you're going to make the wife happy. You know? I won't be but, happy, too. But we run the world. I won't be happy, too. You'll be happy when I'm happy. So, this is what we're going to do. We are going to set schedule for um, Miss Patrice to come back on our podcast. This time, because of whatever technical difficulties that we're having tonight, we're going to schedule to do it in person. So that way we won't keep getting interrupted um, for whatever reason. Um, but Miss Patrice, I was saying that we want to schedule to do another podcast with you, but in person. So 
live. Good idea. <laughs> uh, I don't know what is yeah. going on tonight, but because well, our subject was happy couple, happy marriage, um, if you can just elaborate on that, happy couple, happy, happy, happy marriage, and what is? Let her talk. Uh, oh, she disappeared. Go oh, ahead. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I moved to a different location. I don't know if this helps. But anyway, um, definitely. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. We've lost her. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Um, a young couple ourselves um, that we need this kind of information. Miss Patrice has um, workshops. She has... Um, uh, retreats. Um, she does a lot of group therapy. She does individual therapy. So what we're going to do is we are going to schedule to talk to Miss Patrice again about marriages and about keeping your marriage stress less, not stress free, because unfortunately marriage comes with stress, but how to keep the stress down in your marriage um, and talk more about communicating and um, what are the, the things that you need to incorporate in your marriage to have a successful marriage? What do you need in your marriage to, to it's going to be healthy and it's going to grow? Um, these are the kind of conversations that we want to talk about and that we want to cover that we wanted to cover tonight. Um, I think that we have one of the points that she gave is that communication is probably the biggest factor in marriages that she has seen that causes problems in marriages and any relationship, whether it's with your fiance or whether it's with your girlfriend, if you don't have communication, if you can't talk, if you can't be vulnerable with each other, if you can't talk about your, your, your past pains, if you can't um, connect on a deeper level, then it causes all kinds of problems in your relationship. Um, Again, being newly married, we are still learning how to communicate with each other. We're learning each other's styles and our learning styles, what works for each other. But it all comes down to communication. We still date each other. We talk every night about our day. I would suggest that's something that you do with your mate. Before you go to bed, talk about your day. Talk about the good day. How was work? Um, how are the kids? What are some things that we need to address? But then also talk about each other. What you appreciate, what you appreciate about each other, what you love about each other. What is it that you might think that you need to work on? These are the kind of things and the kind of conversations that should be had in marriage. And we are going to invite Miss Patrice back um, to talk to us live. <laughs> so we are going to schedule that to talk to Miss Patrice live about marriages. Happy couple, happy life. It's not just about me. It's not just about him. It's not just about you. It's not just about them. It's about us as one unit working together to have a happy life together. So thank you everyone for joining us. We will go ahead and schedule for Miss Patrice to speak to us live and in person so that we can um, really have some deeper conversations. Um, I will be sharing, of course, um, any workshops that she has coming up. She is located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And <laughs> <laughs> she, just, she just sent me a message saying we was about to change someone's life. Yes, we were. Well, and yes, steamy. we will. The was <laughs> so we are going to plan to get um, back with Miss Patrice. We will plan that and I will get a date out to you as soon as possible so that you can join us live and you can ask the questions and we can get the answers live with Miss Patrice. But one thing I would love for you to take away tonight, communicate, talk to each other, make time for each other, and just know it's not all about you. You have to work on your marriage together in order for it to work. Have a great night. Ha, ha, ha.